Hello and welcome to the Blank Cover Network. I'm BCV Dom and today we are talking about action figures, in particular Marvel's Avalanche, one of the Marvel Legends released on the new retro carded wave. In between shifts at work today and a courier arrives with a box from Star Action Figures and I thought that's kind of early and it is. Would you believe it? Avalanche is already arriving. I mean, when did they reveal this wave? Was it uh, Hasbro PulseCon? Was that when this wave was revealed? That's not too long ago and they're already landing on our doorsteps. So I thought I'd throw up the camera, throw up the lights and do a quick review of Avalanche. Looking at him in the packaging here and it's what we've come to expect and I think love about the retro carded wave, especially for you mint on card collectors because Avalanche follows the same format that we had that sort of blue and white X Cyclops, the Wolverine and the Black Ninja Garb, Storm, like they're really following suit with that retro line and it's really fun. If you're a mint on card collector, it's a really nice design to display your action figure. But as you can see from the blister card here, he doesn't come with much. They say seismic force in those big old pop art comic book splash graphics right there on the front of the card, but what force effects does he actually come with? Nada, nothing. Zilch. The back of the card reads Marvel's Avalanche, and that's important because the Avalanche belongs to Marvel. It's a possessive Marvel, if you will. Brotherhood of Mutants veteran Avalanche can generate powerful seismic waves from his hands. And on the right side of the card, we see the cross cell showing you all the other figures in this wave. It is Wolverine in that X Factor X Men training outfit, Dark Phoenix, Longshot, Multiple Man. Avalanche and Spiral. And I think it's a fairly strong wave. I mean, Wolverine's always a hit. People always want Wolverine, especially if you've got that training garb and actually there'll be other X characters in the same outfits. Like people are gonna wanna complete that collection. But you've also got the much sought after, now renovated Dark Phoenix. Multiple Man, which could be an army builder. Spiral, which again has become a bit of a grail for some Marvel Legends collectors. And if you don't want that three pack deluxe con exclusive long shot with Mojo and Dazzler, then you can get this long shot instead, which is a slightly different design. I get that, different paint apps, but ultimately it's still long shot. So I think this is a fairly strong way for the X collectors out there. And Marvel's Avalanche helps us get closer and closer to completing that Brotherhood of mutants. Come on Blob, where are ya? Enough looking at him outside of the packaging, let's open up Avalanche and have a look at the figure itself. Here he is, Marvel's Avalanche in the clamshell and what it looks like is a removable helmet. Is that new information? I don't know. Let's take him out of the clamshell and have a better look. Here is Avalanche, out of the clamshell, and I think I was wrong. I think the helmet doesn't come off. I've had a little sort of play with it here, trying to remove it, and although you can kind of see it is clearly a head sculpt with a separate piece on top of it and sort of the, and around the mouth guard and the nose, it does move and flex. It actually, I think, is glued down on the furrows of his brow and at the back of the head sculpt itself, which looks, it looks like there's very little room for error there right at the back. You can't really move that. So interesting. I thought maybe the helmet came off. Don't know why. Do you want to have Avalanche with the helmet off? Did he have that in the cartoon maybe at some point? But no, that helmet is staying solidly on unless some of you kit bashers and customizers decide to heat up the head very quickly and remove the helmet and see what lies underneath. Let me know if you do that in the comments below. But until then, we have got Avalanche. And the first thing that jumps out at me, I think, is the very basic but very striking color scheme. It is Avalanche's costume 100%. We've got a near royal blue, it's very striking. And on top of that, we have the pearlescent mithril silver-esque armor. And that's about it. The rest, I think, has gone into the face sculpt, which is a pretty good face sculpt. I don't know whose face this is. It looks quite new to me. And that seems to be where a lot of the energy has gone into because the rest is very simple, very basic. It does the job. It doesn't do anything more than that. It doesn't do anything less than it either. It just does the job that you'd want with Avalanche. I doubt he's a popular enough character, but I could have imagined this character lends itself to that cell shaded line somewhere down the line but I don't think he's popular enough to warrant releasing him again with different blues and different whites on the silver and blue respectively. Because let's face it, it's the big hitters that got the cell shaded X-Men VHS treatment, not Avalanche. In terms of articulation, this is a pretty bog standard buck, I think. We've got the double jointed elbows, but still with pins, so mine is a little gummy. 
at the elbow joint and we have double jointed knees again with pins and mine are a little gummy because I think this mold has been used many a time before. Who is this? Like whose buck is this? There are so many Marvel Legends now and there's nothing extraordinary about the base of Avalanche except for his shoulder guards here. So I'm sure we've had him before. I can't tell you who it is but I'm certain he's in your collection already somewhere with a different paint app. There's some nice design on the boots, the sort of crinkle of the boots. So you're like, oh, okay, the boots are not metallic. They're sort of leather, I guess, or something sturdier, but they've been painted silver, but I like it. It looks nice. And then he's also got the ab crunch there as well as the hip swivel. So really nothing to write home about in terms of articulation. It, again, it does the job. And I feel like maybe that's Avalanche's motto. He's one of the brotherhood of mutants. He's not the leader. He's not the newest guy. He's just the guy who will try and get the job done. And I think this action figure is very similar to that. Nothing exceptional, but it gets the job done for your collection of X-Men or the Brotherhood of Mutants. Looking at the pros and cons now, let's look at the pros first, because it's always nice to start with the pros. For you completionists out there, he is getting you one step closer to the finish line of the Brotherhood of Mutants. Like, that I know is a big thing for a lot of us. We all have our collections, we want to complete our teams, we want to complete from Marvel Legends, Thunderbolts, a version of the Avengers, West Coast Avengers, X-Men, X-Factor, whoever it is. And if you're one of the people that is trying to complete the Brotherhood of Mutants, you now have Avalanche and he sits nicely within that collection, within that team. That's what we want and that's what we've been given. So well done you who are getting to complete the team of the Brotherhood of Mutants, I think next year with the release of a large mutant. But with Avalanche, you're one step closer already. Another pro I think is he's very striking in the packaging. If I was a kid walking through a comic book shop, walking through a store, and I saw this guy on the shelf in that blister pack, amongst all the other action figures in this wave, I would think this is the one who jumps out at me. He's got this striking blue color scheme and he seems to have armor as well. And he's got this serious expression on his face. He's everything that Kid Dom would want in an action figure. I might make him a hero. I might make him a villain. Who knows what I'd do with him decades and decades ago. But for now, I'd say that if you saw this guy with that blister pack packaging, not the windowless packaging that we're now coming to expect from Hasbro, but that blister pack packaging, you'd get a really really great reaction, I think, from kids or even collectors who want to dabble in Marvel Legends and see this guy. Really imaginative, fun, superhero garb, I think. That's what this thing does. It is a comic book in action figure form, and that's what you want. And I think that's what would make it stand out on the shelf. For me and my taste, I actually quite like the helmet and the armor on his chest. I think the pearlescent mithril silver-esque helmet and sort of swirly plastic that they use for those, I think it works really well well in my collection at that sort of retail level. I don't think this guy is particularly going to mesh well with your Mezcos or your Mayfexes because of that swirly whirly plastic. But for your Marvel Legends collection, I think it's really fun. I think it does the job well. And the fact that there's layering to his head sculpt, the fact that the helmet sits on top of the head so you have a bit of depth between the head and the face, it's not just one piece, I think is a bit of extra effort that actually goes a long way. Like I said, I thought it could come off. I thought, oh, maybe you can take the helmet off and that's an extra element to the action figure, an extra accessory perhaps. And although you can't, it does give the figure a bit more depth to the face, to the head, and that I think is a pro. Looking at the cons now, and I'd say no accessories. You get two extra sets of hands, but that's it, nothing more than that. A selling point on the packaging is that he has seismic powers. So why not give him two sets of hands, these kind of grasping hands, the fist hands that he's got, and maybe flat hands as well that he could set to the ground as he's going to use his seismic powers or forward if he's going to use them that way. That I think would make a big difference. And some sort of power effect. Surely some sort of power effect would have gone a long way with a figure that does not include a bath, but you're charging upward of 25 bucks for it. I'm not sure that's enough bang for your buck, quite frankly. I think if people weren't keen to complete this action figure in their collections, we'd be seeing this guy peg warming in six or seven months to come. It's an old used 
buck. Not this one, I, he's brand new, but you know what I mean. Yes, the pins are blue, so it doesn't kind of matter with that color scheme element, but I've come to be worried when I open action figures from Marvel Legends that are the old pinned action figures. They're not the Vulcan buck, they're not the Shriek buck, they're not something new, because sometimes you get that slightly gummy effect that wibbly wobbly underneath the elbow and underneath the knee and it reeks of cheapness it reeks of paint by numbers in so many ways well not in so many ways in one way it's the buck is bendy it's bendy it's one way but it's a big way and then another con i'd say is not a major one but it's a lack of paint or a lack of a wash I think the blue elements of the buck, which I'd say take up about 40, 45% of the action figure, really could have done with a little bit of a wash. To get in between all the crevices of his muscles, really make it pop, make the action figure look a little bit more deluxe, a little bit more presentable in your displays with minimal effort, quite frankly, with very little effort from the manufacturer's part. Like I said, it's a basic action figure and it does the job, but something like a wash, I think really would have elevated this action figure for nearly Nearly no cost. That's just my opinion. I know there's different tastes, people have different desires from their collection, so maybe this more neutral offering, this neutral presentation does give customizers and collectors more to work with, so I could be wrong about the wash, but for me, I could have done with a wash on Avalanche. And I'm gonna leave it there because actually there's nothing to write home about on this action figure. I think if you know you need him to complete your collection, then you know you're gonna buy him. Maybe you've already pre-ordered him. And for everyone else, I think you can probably wait and we'll discover that he's peg warming in six or seven months time. Once that first wave of people, like myself, have gone, oh, I really want that character, so I'm gonna buy him. Once that dies out and there's another batch of releases of this uncanny X-Men wave, we'll find that Avalanche is left out in the cold. <laughs> That's an avalanche pun to finish this video off. Thank you so much for watching. If you could be so kind as to hit that like button, I'd really appreciate it. And I'll be back with another video very soon.